already landed into systemic implications like amyloidosis, chronic renal failure. There is no other way except to get rid of the infection, to save his life. Infections associated with extensive deformation of neighboring joints, low socioeconomic status of the patient, high risk patients who cannot afford, who cannot tolerate multiple surgeries, probably they will be better off after the amputations and the artificial limb. Chronic osteomyelitis associated with vascular complications where it is not possible for the infection to subside because the vascularity is not there. Chronic osteomyelitis with neoplasia. Thus, various modalities of treatment are sequestrectomy, saucerization, two-stage procedure described by Belfast, three-stage procedure described by Papineus, total excision of the infected segment of bone, polymethyl methylate antibiotic bead chain system, biodegradable antibiotic delivery system, close suction irrigation, Isaro technique, hyperbaric oxygen therapy, in the last, in the last, in the last amputation. Few complications which, we may, which uh, one may encounter. Acute exacerbation of chronic osteomyelitis may take place. Pathological fractures, stiffness, contacture formations, deformation of the bones and joints, growth disturbances due to, dis, due to involvement of the epiphysis. Residual osteomyelitis, of course, the anemia, chronic renal failure, epitheliomas, amyloidosis, recurrent breakdown of the unstable skin, gross cosmetic defects. Now a word about the infection in internal fixation devices. About 5% of internal fixation devices become infected. Incidence of infection after internal fixation of closed fractures is generally lower, but the incidence exceeds 30% after fixation in open fractures. Bacteria, as well as the human tissue cells, have an affinity for the molecules on the surface of the implant. Both compete for occupancy on the same surface. Tissue cells by adaptation and integration. Bacteria by adhesions and colonization. This contest has been aptly called, uh, called as the race for the surface. If the tissue cells win, the implant is incorporated. If bacteria win, the resultant infection usually persists until the implant is removed. Implant associated infections are typically caused by microorganisms growing in structures known as biofilms or the glycocalyx. Take X-ray as soon as the diagnosis of infection is suspected to st in impl after implant surgery. Assess the stability of fixation. Radiolicency around the fixation devices suggests loose hardware. Assess Fracture healing as well. Do not confuse periosteal reaction from the infection with fracture callus. Plain tomography may assist in assessment of fracture healing. Finally, classical signs of osteomyelitis with involucrum or sequestrum may be present. The, the method of treatment of infection after internal fixation is based upon the clarity, the how, how, to, how to do if the implant gets infected, how to go ahead. The time of onset after internal fixation, early infection or late infection, the status of fracture healing when the patient presented to you with the infected implant, the stability of the implant and the stability of the fracture, extent of the radiographic bone involvement, the type and virulence of the organisms, the patient's general condition and the health. Early infection, less than four weeks old, get the total differential counts done, ESR, CRP, CRP, if they have the normal limits, there's nothing to worry. Treat as cellulitis, treat with antibiotics. If they are raised, infection, deep infection, aspirate, submit it for culture sensitivity, antibiotics as per culture sensitivity reports. Explore, debride. If fixation is unstable, revise to a stable fixation. Or remove the hardware, go for the external fixation. Antibiotics should be given as per culture sensitive report. Remove the implant when, improve, remove the fixation only when the fracture heals. Late infection, see what is the status of the fracture. If the fracture is united, implant can very well be taken off. Debride, the, debride it 
antibiotics as per cancer sensitivity report. If the fracture is not united, infection is present, fracture is not united. C, whether the fixation is stable or unstable. If the fixation is good, curate the sinus, give the antibiotics. Implant is to be retained till the fracture heals. Implant to be removed only when the fracture consolidates. But this holds true when the fracture or the fixation is stable enough. If the stability of the fixation is poor, remove the hardware, debride antibiotics, and the, when the infection is controlled, convert to the stable fixation. Some radiographs, the patient with chronic osteomyelitis, you can see the sequestrum. Whole, whole of the diaphysis got sequestrated. Another patient, whole of the, whole of the tibia, tibia, tibia got sequestrated. And this was managed by fibulization, the tibialization of fibula. This patient, chronic osteomyelitis, was managed by saucerization and the primary skin flap crafting. The future of a patient with chronic osteomyelitis, the results of surgery in chronic osteomyelitis is no longer gloomy as, as was usually considered the outcome of a well done surgery can bring out complete cure of the disease and the future is as bright as it could have been if uninfected. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you very much Dr. DK sir. Uh, this lecture was very good and very uh, common topic of osteomyelitis, either in any way, in the practical or in theory, it has to come in the examination for the PA audience. And now that a short tea break is permitted, I request all the students, please, within the time, you have to be here. Audience and uh, my teacher, sir. How to prepare for PG practical examination? Sir. Good morning, seniors and students. I am Dr. R.C. Meena, professor, Senior Professor, Head of Department at SMS Medical College, Jaipur. I am conducting regularly IOPG teaching program at my institute. institute. Most of the students, I think, have been attended that. Question among and on the tongue of a PG student, he always asks his seniors uh, both how to prepare for the practical examination or his teachers during the ward round or during the tea time or in resting period. Sir, how I have to prepare for the practical examination? What will come in the practical? Uh, what, was, what was the case? What will be the case? And what has been in the last examination, what will be the next examination? So, a summarized answer and solution of that question and that problem I am going to present you. I hope definitely you will benefit by this lecture. So, practical examination are nightmares for all the students. A student before practical examination never sleep in a calm and comfort sleep. He always see who will come the examination, what will be the case, how I will face it, what will be the attitude and tone of the examiner. So he always think that how to prepare for PG examination or practical. And practical examinations come in his night mars for all students. And at the same time, he thinks that what to do when he becomes nervous, no answer, no solution comes in his brain or in his mind, then he thinks what to do. Either he requests to the Lord Hanuman, Jai Hanuman, Gyan Gunasagar, Jai Kapis Tevlo Kozagar. 
or to J. J. Sip Sankar. But that is not the solution of this problem. Or he say, make a pity excuse to the examiner, sir, I was busy, sir, I was more and more busy. I was even last time, at, uh, last moment attending the emergency with my seniors or my teachers. Or beg to head of department for mercy, sir, this is my last exam, sir, I am the uh, very sincere and obedient student of your tenure in unit. So for that point of view, these things will not help but you have to follow some basic principles so that you can make confident and yourself build a confident or a power to face this problem. For that, you have to know about your subject. A complete knowledge of a subject in a summarized and a message way. Not in that, that orthopedic. Simple spelling is not sufficient. But you have to know who has defined the orthopedics first time. What does mean by orthopedic? If you do not know everything or in detail about the orthopedic, examiner will ask you, doctor, who has defined the orthopedic? What is its definition? And I am sure more than 50% students among you do not know the definition of orthopedic or who has the name of the scientific scientist who has described it. So a complete knowledge since beginning to end should be in your brain with a knowledge of clinical examination of the patient, whether it is in the practical purpose or in the bard. So regarding that, with complete knowledge, the second point is identify the potential practical cases and prepare accordingly. I think Samir is my senior, Alok is my friend, and CP is also Dr. Ray. For my last professional experience since 1983, I am PG admitted student of the 1983. I have seen only these three cases. One long, one hip, another spine. So, in other words, we can say the paper is totally out without any penalty and any offense. If you want to prepare this systematically, nobody can fail you, I challenge. But what happened? You never see it seriously and sincerely. And there are only five short cases, five short cases. One is on osteomyelitis, another is tumor or swelling. And la uh, third one is non-union, fourth one is CTV or deformity due to either reason. Being looked into on these problems and these cases, we have focused this program for you. Osteomyelitis was well elaborated by my previous speaker. Tumor swelling will be come to you in the next sessions. Non-union and other malunion will also be teach you. CTV, of course, will tell Dr. Alok. And Dr. Samir has been already tell you about the very prestigious lecture. So focus your study apart from these two long cases, two short cases, one long case on the X-ray as well as that has to be teach you by another speaker coming soonly. Surgical instruments that will help you for the passing the examination. If you fail to present properly your long case, how can you balance your viva practical by doing a good presentation during the surgical instrumentation viva, by reading the x-ray, or by surgical implants, fixation, its approach, its uses, its misuses, as well as pathological specimen. And next fourth point that has to be discussed during the proper examination, go with a fully loaded for an army man. Not merely going just that, uh, boss, your exam has been finished, give me your apron, give me your pen. Sister, give me the goniometer that I have left in the almari. Or asking through the bar lady that, give me the measure tape that, that you use to daily. And sometimes they say, junior, oh, give me your hammer, yaar. my exam is today. And they are asking even that bar lady who is preparing the gauze and pads for the routine dressing, cotton and wool or uh, tuning fork 
or stethoscope from the medical student, medicine side students. But they do not take it seriously that they have to fully loaded with all these equipment during the practical examination. Otherwise, you do not watch your attitude and your preparation. Examiner watch these things very seriously and sincerely. That this apron is the day before yesterday apron has its tag has been changed and tapped with another tag. He take it very seriously. And you take the goniometer of other students. You do not know how to use this because the previous student was its original real owner. He was very tuned to use this, but you are not tuned to this. Sometimes you are holding it in the reversed manner. Sometimes you are holding it in the uh, upward downward manner. So you have to be fully loaded with all these things. These things count a lot during your practical examination. And these things are not rented in anywhere in the academic lectures or courses or literature. And go with bell dress. I always condemn any student who comes in the t-shirt, sandal, or even there's so many students I have been seen during the examination, my 15 year experience of the as an examiner, even that they sometimes come in the black color slippers. I do not like that at all. My personal feeling that my students should come in a proper bell dress that is washed, ironed and labeled apron with on sticker, either by the stitching or by stamping it. And with a formal dress, look like a doctor, not a conductor or a beggar that is standing on the platform. So many students. Or with polished shoe, because you are going to impress the society and the lot of community of the <coughs> your field. With a combed hair, not like this, some hairs coming on the interior, some going in the post hair. Of course, the Einstein was the same example of that, but you cannot beat the Einstein. He used to forget his own house when he was returned from the, his lab to his house. But that was a great. So what is to do and what is not to do during the practical examination? Be polite. Never be aggressive or uh, uh, pathetic. Be polite. Be humble as well as accept your mistake gracefully. Sir, sorry, I was not aware about this thing. Unfortunately, I have not grown through, go, gone through the recent literature or deep. That's why I am unable to appreciate your views. Answer to the point. Say somebody asked, uh, a case of osteomyelitis come to you. If you fail to properly represent the osteomyelitis case, ultimately examiner will ask you, doctor, you just tell me how the word osteomyelitis derived. It is the component of three words. One is osteous, osseous, another is myelus, and another is itis. Osteomyelitis. If you know these three things, then I am sure, I am confident that you will definitely answer. But if you do not know meaning of the osteomyelitis, then nobody will help you during the examination. So answer should be to the point. He is asking about the chronic discharging deformed persistent osteomyelitis. In that, you are not need to say that, sir, it might be acute osteomyelitis because pus is coming. You have to see that this is the sequelae of the acute osteomyelitis after passing the subacute osteomyelitis stage, chronic osteomyelitis stage. And a chronic osteomyelitis stage, at the same time, the things should become in your brain that you have to differentiate from uh, differentiate it from the other similar conditions, long-standing non-exclusing osteomyelitis of Gary. In that way, you are not simply say that it is chronic osteomyelitis, sir. Otherwise, the next question of the examiner will be that. But what are the else, or what will be the next problem uh, similar to this? So that <coughs> things should be in your mind. Examine the patient from right side of the coach always. The reason is this, the examine remain on the opposite side, not on the same side of the examiner. If he would like to know something, examiner would like to know something, he will come to your side or he will call you. But stand on the one side, particularly right side is the safer side. Never come from this side to this side, this side to this side. Of course, the examination of this patient or part or any pathology should be done from all sides, 
but ultimately when you reply you answer to the examiner you should be stable on both leg not on the one leg or not in the sewing phase or not in the coming forward or backward you should be stand like this with the confidence and talent sir yes <coughs> take patient's permission before examine sometime it uh, leave a bad impression that you have not take the patients in confidence particularly the examination of the female patient or its children's a adult or old man will not mind it we would not mind it but a female patient or a children's will definitely want to know what you are doing in that point of view you are not supposed to say that i am examining you for the my practical examination point of view that is also a trick uh, that uh, dear patient or dear friend or dear boy i am examining you for your betterment and i want to prove your disease in front of the other doctors who has come from the outside of this site or this uh, center so a consent of the patient is must and with adequate exposure of the examining part it should not be like this that you are examining say for example the knee joint patient having a triple deformity in the knee joint the causes may be whatsoever that you have seen once uh, by slipping the cloth from the knee joint that there is deformity of the knee joint and after that when the examiner is there you cover it or sometimes patient cover it in that circumstances you have to again clearly expose it and prove your presentation prove your answer that sir he having the triple deformity flexion abduction and external rotation at the same time he will ask you that what are the causes of this triple deformity and the things and answers should be in your mind and ultimately in the last but not least you have to say to the patient and as well as well your honorable examiner thank you sir so this is the way and manner to examine the patient that i have already told you but what is not to do never come over or shabbily dressed as i told you never bluff to the teacher or do not say lie to the examiner they have gone through your stage also not a single examiner has been directly come as a examiner from the world he has gone through your course of 3 year pg at least 3 year senior residency or tutorship or assistant professorship after that getting or gaining a 15 or 10 years examiner experience after that university appointed his as a examiner so do not say any lie thing or bluff him and think you know ever do not think that you know everything or he do know, or never think in your mind that he do not know yaar what he is examiner i know everything what he will do my career or over me so never think that you know everything or neither you have to argue with the examiner of course you can argue if you are with full leverage of the knowledge or literature in the last examination of dnb examination when 20 students were at my center sms medical college during the month of september and 15 students were at the time of zoom ms examination at that time i was chief examiner i noted the students that uh, i asked what is the problem of the patient they simply told sir ctb any examiner will not satisfy this answer or rather he will be anger with you sir this is a case of congenital telepathic equinus deformity you have to speak in a full form never use abbreviation it is not your right that you use
you having proved answer literature or references in your hand then say sir this is that uh, of course i am not so talented but uh, i am giving my experience i would like to share my experience when i appear samir in the 1986 as assistant director for ministry of health examination in the upsc at the time dr apne <coughs> ms ke director hua ka farooq saab was the expert and dr madhav pai the from the ajmer mein jaipur they ask me what is the cause of non union of the leg bones at the time the sarmentos ptv was very popular and he lay down a principle that a micro movement in a axial pattern manner or in a axial plane is advisable for early union that was published in 1986 like that journal jbgs i reply they give me the answer that there are four most important cause of non union or delayed union one is incomplete immobilization of the among them one was the incomplete immobilization of the bone i simply without being a rigid or prejudicial i simply say sir i have gone through a recent literature and publication that a micro movement in a axial plane is advisable for early movement and union for a micro movement for the early union they immediately shock immediately shock i told them there that sir this is the reference of the jbgs publication by sarmento for his ptv yeah they only i think so that they just select me on that answer it was my by chance ki they asked me that question i reply in a very logical way with a simple politely way unfortunately i couldn't go there on that side so the take home message of my lecture is concentrate on your practical topics not on the what picture has been released today and what will be on the tomorrow and who is the coming actor in the hollywood or bollywood go properly with a dressed manner take necessary things along with you when you go to the practical exam be polite and relaxed during the examination do examination thoroughly do not lie or manipulate the things or argue with your examiner unnecessary until and unless you do not have a full proof bio data or any reference in your hand over confidence is always har harmful it is my observation thank you at last to the patient and doctor and thank you to all of you for your patience and hearing my lecture thank you कहाँ से है हाँ डॉक्टर रे इज द प्रोफेसर फ्रॉम मेडिकल कॉलेज कैलकाटा ही विल टीच यू अबाउट हाउ टू रीड द एक्स रे फॉर प्रैक्टिकल एग्जामिनेशन पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू एंड आर्ट ऑफ हिस्ट्री टेकिंग बिफोर द एग्जामिनेशन हाउ हैव यू हैव टू टेक द हिस्ट्री वेलकम प्रोफेसर I welcome Professor Ray. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. In continuation of the Professor Mena's talk, better I like to talk to this aspect, the art of history taking. That would be fine for you, I think. Now, thing is, just imagine who is the best doctor. Whom do you call is the best doctor? The answer is who has this A B C quality. That means to patient who is available. My best doctor is my doctor should be available. My doctor should be well behaved, and he must be competent enough to deal my problem. You know that uh, we are in medical profession. everybody says that it is a noble profession there's no doubt about it but have you uh, read it in your 
book about the, your professionalism? I don't think so. It is not in MCI syllabus, not in your university curriculum. But just imagine, we are working in the medical industry. We have one product that is called healthcare service. And after passing, you are going to sell your product, your healthcare service. You should be well concerned about your quality, product quality. You must be concerned with your marketing, everything. You believe or not, a doctor who needs professional lifetime, he about consults, near about 30 lakhs. So why should it be not be uh, art of uh, state of the art? Two, two lakhs consultation in your life. So it's not a matter of joke. For that, one part is the good consultation, art, and the diagnosis of the tit. You know the diag for. Uh, any clinical conditions for the di to diagnose, history taking is an important. And for that, 60 to 80 percent comes from the history. 15 to 30 percent on examination and remainder on investigation. Consultation is nothing but to collect scientific some data or information from the patient. And at the same time, you are going to develop a good relationship with your customer, that is your, that is your patient. And you have your co cooperation from the patient so that it will help in further management of the patient. So a good communication skill is required. Please do not underestimate your patient. You know, a consultation means meeting between the two persons, you are and your customer, that is your patient. You are technical expert, but at the same time, mind that he is also an expert. So it is a meeting between the two experts. And he is the expert in the experience of his illness. And maximum, you know the pain, radicular pain, how it is. He knows better than that, that of you, how it feels. He, if he is allowed to express in a better way, he will be the master. You do not know, but he knows how is the radicular pain. So do not underestimate your patient. So in history taking, issues are pre general some preparation, then establishing some initial report with your customer. Then you identify the patient's problem and their concerns. Some general preparation of, of ways the, where you do your consultations or taking history, a clean environment should be there, comfortable environment, friendly environment with good, good uh, sitting arrangement patient's uh, examination coach. Probably you will see in the uh, here, which I propagate or always where I get a chance. On the t examination couch, there's a sheet, sheet or paper sheet that costs only 25 paisa or uh, 50 paisa maximum. For each patient, you can provide it. In those who have gone outside in the Western country or a good hospital, good corporate hospital, some, not every corporate, corporate hospital in our country even, they do not provide. It's a simple thing, a roll paper is coming here. You, each time you change it, your patient will be very comfortable and will like it and have a good, you can have a good comment from the patient as well. It costs only 25 or 50 paisa may not be always uh, true in government hospital, but you can.
convince your administrator. Show initial report, you introduce yourself. If you were late in your clinic or OPD, just an apology. So I'm sorry, I'm a little late because I had some emergency operation or some appointment like that. It will give a much better start and show respect to their individuality. Explain your role and intention that what you are going to do will take the history of the patient and then it will help uh, to take this uh, problem and how much you will take duration of interview. I will come to that why it is important. Not all, I told you earlier, do not underestimate the patient. Patient might be anybody, anybody in the country. So for that, communication skill is a very, very important part. Anybody can be your patient, starting from a politician or a sports personality like that, or a film star, or am janta, kai bhi ho sakta, anybody. But your attitude should be universal, your system should be universal, so that you won't have to do a separate system for this patient or that patient. Sure, your everything, attitude and your system should be universal. There are different consulta consultation styles. It is a very, mostly it is followed. You should be very friendly with the patient so that patient can uh, be comfortable to express his or her distress or friendly to discuss anything which he could not do it with other members of the family, but he can with you. This is another control. Consultations, you know, the it is a patient control consultation. That means patient is taking upper hand and doctor is submissive a little bit. Sometimes it happens so. In which conditions patients long sufferer like rheumatoid arthritis or some malignancies or like that. But you know that you will not be probably able to do much. He's irritated. You will have to tolerate it. You just keep silence, silent. And you Sometimes paternalistic approach that some are not following your advice or something, but you have the role of like this, you can with good force, you can take the upper hand in some situations. Anyway, when you are actually going to examine the patient or taking the history, probably as just think of the examination hall, you have finished your short cases, you are going for the long case, and you have probably not done well in the one case, in the long case series, out of three case, one case, examiner asked you some question, you could not answer that part. You are still thinking and while you're going to the next patient. Please clear your mind of the last patient as you wash your hands to prepare for the next. Think about your timing, you know. In examination, it is about 30 to 45 minutes for you, including examination and writing. As Professor Meena has everything, uh, detailed everything 